Okay, in mathematics, we always consider um, arrangement. We also talk about selection. We're also talking about how we can apply some wide range of this order concept in probability. Now, uh, it, uh, there's an area in mathematics which is very widely applied, and that is what we refer to as permutation and combination. Why do we talk about permutation and combination? In our ed everyday life, we, 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 we have choices. We, we learn how to select, how to select, or talk about arrangement, um, and so on and so forth. So mathematics can also help us in doing that. So I introduce to you permutation and combination. Now, in permutation and combination, we must understand something. I'll bring an example for you. Suppose you have a phone. Suppose you have a phone and you try to make a password from your phone. Try to make password. You, you want to make a password by probably four numbers. You, know. uh, you have choices to make and the choice will be from 0, 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you have these choices to make ten numbers. You have there. You have ten numbers here that you can choose. You may want to make your to be one, two, five, and nine to be your password. You can be nine, three, six, and one, and so on and so forth. But remember something: when we are making these choices, it is possible that while making these choices, you may repeat a number. You may decide, okay. I want to make it one, 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 and four. It's also possible that I say, okay, I'm not going to repeat numbers. It's just going to be four, zero, six, and one. So in this, well, mathematics can help you know the number of arrangements, the number of ways you can actually express these numbers and make a password. So it's very, very interesting. But the difference here is that whenever we are doing this, you must understand, you must consider, first thing is that you must consider, you must consider the number of elements you have. You must consider the number of elements, or let me say the number of choices you have to make, or elements. And in this case, we call it N. So when we are dealing with permutation and combination, we use N generally to represent the number of elements we have to select from our numbers, you have to arrange or so on and so forth. And later on, we'll now say, okay, how are we picking these numbers? Are we picking four numbers at a time? Are we picking two numbers at a time? Are we picking one number at a time? So R is the number of chosen objects. So we say NPR in mathematics is the same thing as um, um, arrangement arrangement so when we talk about permutation we talk about arrangement of n objects arrangement of n objects taken r at a time arrangement of n objects taken r at a time that means um probably are taking four when you want to arrange um you have books uh you it's possible that I have so many books and I want to arrange the books and I may decide to uh, pick uh, a book. So you see that my R in this case will be one. I may decide to pick three books. So my R is three out of maybe 40 books. So it all depends on how I want to arrange them. But in this case of arrangement, we are talking about permutation. We are talking about permutation with order. So anytime we are talking about uh, permutation with, uh, we also consider order. So anytime we're talking about permutation arrangement, there must be order, order must be considered. The truth is that whenever order is not considered and you have to make a selection, we don't have permutation again. What we now have is combination. So the formula for this NPR is actually equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial. So this is the formula that we actually use um, take note, we actually use to resolve problems that has to do with permutation. N factorial divided by N minus R 
factorial. This is number of ways you can arrange n objects taking r at a time, or you are choosing r objects. You can apply this formula. So on the other hand, you see something there, something that looks like an exclamation mark, and that is called the factorial symbol. So this is referred to as a factorial symbol. So that is called the factorial symbol. And for instance, what I mean by factorial symbol, if we have n factorial, it is the same thing as n uh, times n minus one times n minus two. You continue this till you get to zero factorial and note that zero factorial is equals to one. There's a proof for this, but I'm not going to be talking about the proof for this for now. So zero factorial is actually equals to one. So if I have something like four factorial, it's going to give me 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 0 factorial and that is going to be 4 times 3 which is 12 times 2 24 so this gives me 24 uh, ways. So how many times can I have, uh, arrange 4 balls, different color of balls uh, without repetition? How many ways if I have 4 balls, just imagine you have four balls, one, two, three, four of different colors. So in how many ways can I um, arrange this? It is four factorial. So we can arrange those balls in 24 ways. So uh, four balls of different, of different colors. Four balls of different colors. So you can arrange them in four, and that will be 24 ways. And take note that you must consider order in this case. You must consider order. So, um, uh, but if, what if we want to arrange those four balls, one, two, three, four balls, and want to, anytime we want to arrange them, we pick two objects, we pick two balls. Anytime we're arranging, we're picking two. So that is going to be four permutation two, because we choose two objects whenever we're arranging it. So it's going to be four permutation two, which is four factorial over four minus two factorial, which is the same thing as four factorial over two factorial, which is, um, warning, this is not two factorial. This is going to be four times three times two times one. And this is going to be two times one. This will cancel this, and you have 12 ways. So if I want to arrange, if I want to arrange uh, four balls, taking two at a time, you see, I'm going to arrange them in 12 ways. Okay, now we talk about combination. And the only thing that makes combination different from there is because we cancel out the redundancy. We cancel out the redundancy, and in, this, in that case, we do not deal with order is not considered in combination. So when we are dealing with combination, we do not really consider the order. Uh, because here, you must be very careful. You can also arrange this, and you, you have repetition of colors of balls. Like here, you can have two blue balls. Uh, when repetition has to do that, the calculation is different from there. Here, we use n raised to the power of r. So here, if repetition is allowed, we use the formula n raised to the power of r. So this becomes 4 raised to the power of 2, which gives us 16 ways. So if we, we're supposed to arrange n objects, or four objects, picking two at a time, and repetition is allowed, then this is going to be 16 ways. But if repetition is not allowed, it's going to be 12 ways. I need to explain this so that students can understand very well. Now we talk about combination. So in combination, we actually use the word selection. So we actually use the word selection. So permit me to take this out. <coughs> permit me to take this out. So in selection, we have N combination R. And all we do is just, is the formula is just NPR divided by R factorial. We kind of knock out the redundancy, and this is the same thing as N factorial, R factorial, then N minus R factorial. So this is factorial, uh, sorry, combination. So that is selecting, um, uh, selecting, N objects taking R at a time. So if you are taking R at a time, so if I 
I come to a classroom and I have 10 students. And you now ask me, in how many ways can I select two students from that class? I have 10 students in the class. And so the number of students is 10 students, 10 students, 10 students. And I want to actually select students, probably take them out. Um, it's possible I can be taking one student out, one student out. So he asked me, how many, you know, uh, and how many uh, ways can I do that? That is going to be 10 combination one. So if I'm going to be picking one student at a time, that is going to be 10 combination one. If I'm going to be picking three students, if I want to, if I have 10 students and I want to select three students and I want to pick, take in three students, in how many ways can this be done? Take these three students, take order, take note, I said that order is not considered when we're talking about combination. So um, it's just like having a coffee, you want to have a cup of coffee, you have the coffee itself, you have the sugar and you have the milk. In permutation, the arrangement matters. The, the arrangement is strict, it can be, the arrangement is strict, it can be coffee, uh, milk, um, sugar. So in arrangement, it is, if, if you switch this, in permutation, it's going to give you a different answer. But in combination, sugar can come first, coffee can come second, you can switch this, and you're still going to have the same answer. So order is not considered in combination. Okay. So if I have 10 students and I want to select three students at a time, I want to select three students at a time, that is going to be 10 combination three. Sometimes we like using the word committee. Committee. So um, sometimes we have how can a committee of three be formed from 10 people? So that is, we have 10 combination three. So how can I have 10 people and I want to form a committee of three? How do I do that? That is going to give me um, 10 factorial divided by 3 factorial, then 10 minus 3 factorial, and that is going to be 10 uh, factorial divided by 3 factorial, and this is 7 factorial. So this is going to be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial, which we know is 6. You can try that. 3 factorial is 6 times 7 factorial. This will cancel out this. And at the end of the day, um, I have uh, um, 2, uh, so this is 5 times 9 times 8. This is 3. This is going to 3. So at the end of the day, we have 15 times 8, and that is 40. We have 120 ways. 120 ways we can. So we have 120 ways we can form a committee of three, having 10 people as the total. So this is generally the concepts we use. So if, um, for instance, I have um, I have eight boys, and I have 10 girls, for instance, and I want to form a committee of four. Um, I want to form a committee of four. And I want to take, in the committee of four, I want to take two boys. I want to take two boys, select two boys from here. Uh, I want to select also two boys from here. And I want to actually form a committee of four. It's just simple. That is going to be eight combination two times 10 combination two. So at the end of the day, if I solve this and I solve this, I'm going to have the number of ways I can select, make a committee of four. Committee of four, choosing two boys, two boys from eight boys, and this from this. You can see that the total in this case is 18. The total is 18. So in the case, if you are dealing with probability, the probability of committee, for, uh, forming the committee of four, uh, four will be divided by 18 combination 4. But we're not going into that now. So this is, um, this is basically the basic part of combination and a permutation. So we, in our next video, we're going to apply them to solve many other problems. Thank you very much. Remember to like the video and also share. Bye.